Hey, Mel here, and welcome, dear Thriver to Thriver TV, where today I want to talk about the relationship conundrum that we can have after narcissistic abuse. And not just intimate partner relationship, but all narcissistic relationships. So the conundrum's this, it's do you withdraw from life because you've been so betrayed and traumatized, or do you try to keep getting out into life and connect up with humans and take that risk of abuse again? Or maybe there's a third option, another option altogether. But, okay, before we do explore these subjects, these topics, if you like my videos, I'd love you to like and subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you're going to know every time I do a new release. And please also get the word out, share this video with others so that people can learn that they don't have to just merely survive abuse. They can truly thrive after it. All right, so let's dive into the, to today's topic. Let's start off with those shattered beliefs that we can have about humanity after abuse. Because after narcissistic abuse, and it doesn't matter who that person is, your belief in the good of humanity is severely compromised. It's soul shattering to realize that people who can act so loving, caring and kind, or we just know that they should be if they're family members, can actually be sinister people capable of lying straight to your face, exploiting you for their own agenda and treating you like you are some mere object to mine. And you discover that when you're no longer needed by them that you're discarded like yesterday's trash. And this isn't somebody who's just a mere person to you, it's somebody you loved it's a significant person in your life, a lover, a spouse, a family member, a friend, even your own child. It's not just some simple, all right, we disagreed and I've just got to get over it now. It's much more like a soul violation. It threatens the very foundation of your experience. It's heartbreaking. So what do we do? Is it after getting hurt that badly, do we just retreat into loneliness or do we try to get out of the pain by getting out there again into life? So after narcissistic abuse, you might spend a great deal of time alone and maybe it's because you can barely get out of bed, let alone face other people. Maybe you can't try to be normal around people. You know you've got to retreat because you feel so depressed and lifeless. You can feel so much shame or you feel misunderstood. Other people tell you to just get over it and they're stunned that you can't get over it. And maybe you're stunned as well that you're not getting over it. At first, your alone time might be because you really can't do much else. For me, like so many of us, that was exactly the case. Before knowing how to self-partner and heal, like many of us, my time alone was spent researching narcissists frantically. I smoked a lot of cigarettes. I drank a lot of coffee. I didn't eat much healthy food, that's for sure. I shared my war stories and abuse forums. And of course, I was obsessing constantly I wasn't healing and I wasn't getting better. Much of my obsession was because he seemed really happy. He was having a fabulous time getting on with his life, dating younger women, buying flashy cars. He was living in the house that I'd bought. Whereas I, on the other hand, was renting. I was broke. I could barely face anything or anybody so I kind of got to a point where I surmised, like many of us do, I thought, well, if I could just try to meet somebody else to take the pain away, maybe that would constitute getting on with my life. And for sure, society, people were saying to me, just get out, you know, you need to meet somebody else. So I tried. I either met people when I did try to date who were clearly awful 
which really just traumatised and terrorised me even more. Or I met people who made me feel like I missed him even more. Or even nice people who they liked me, but I was hurting them because there was no way I was any in any position to be able to commit to anybody. So maybe you can relate to some of that or all of that. My heart goes out to you if you feel like you're in the place where so many of us go to after abuse, feeling devastatedly lonely or when you try to get back out in the life because you think that's what you've got to do to get better, you just keep getting re-traumatized no matter what you're trying to do. And it may not even be with love potentials. It might just be being around, you know, so-called other normal people. Things just go horribly wrong. So thank goodness there is another way to approach all of this. Let's investigate what that looks like. Healthy aloneness. I am so grateful that finally I found a way to heal that did work. And it was about being alone, but it was different this time because it was self-partnering and turning inwards to heal for real. And to my surprise, it turned out to be the most special time of my life because it was a coming home to me in the most loving, self-devoted way that I'd ever done it. And I'd know, I knew that I had to do it because I knew that my picker choosing other people was clearly broken. I was picking the wrong people. I knew that I didn't trust myself and I wanted to be at, at peace with myself. I wanted to be able to trust my own intuition and learn how to feel safe as myself in the world. I wanted to be happy in my body in this life on this planet without needing something outside of me to feel whole. I realized how codependent I'd been in that way and how painful my life had been as a result of that. I wanted to break free from the pain, from that matrix of thinking that it was always something outside of me that had to make me happy because I realized it wasn't natural. There had to be a better way to live my life. And at first, before understanding this quantum journey, I recognized I had always, even before abuse, I'd spent my life trying to avoid me. I hadn't met the true me, the inner me. I hadn't made peace with that part of myself. And that's why I'd always done things like excessive, compulsive, all or nothing behavior. I'd been a workaholic. I'd had addictions. And of course, I'd been trying to make the wrong people love me because I'd never learned how to be present with, partner and love myself. When I channeled and I formulated the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, which we affectionately call NARP, and I followed those healings, that was what allowed me to turn inwards, love the journey and finally love myself and be able to enjoy the rewards of that. If you're alone right now, a really good question to ask yourself could be, am I purposely healing through this or am I hoping to just get through this? What is usual, and I see this a lot, and I did it as well, is if we're trying to just get through this, it takes years if it happens at all, because it's not a path of healing. And sadly, time doesn't heal narcissistic abuse any more than staying in those self-tormenting obsessions does. And there are people that are still stuck in those decades down the track because they never healed. I liken the time of healthy aloneness like the metaphor of a bird that's got broken wing, wings goes into a bird hospital because the bird can't fly properly. It's in pain and it's susceptible to predators. 
So for the bird, there's a need to pull out of life, go into the hiatus of the bird hospital and mend those wings so that the bird can come back out and be powerful and be safe and not just fly, but soar. I fully committed to my alone time finally when I realized the truth. I fully committed to that for myself, being in that bird hospital to mend my angel wings that were clearly broken up. And the soaring that my life is now, and it really is, in no way could that have just happened randomly if I didn't go into the bird hospital. I wouldn't be able to be the relationship that I have with myself, life and others. And I wouldn't be able to manifest healthy relationships because I wouldn't be able to identify them, accept them or maintain them. And plus, to my surprise, I adored being in the bird hospital once I accepted that that was really the only choice I had and I fully embraced it because that's where I found the relationship that I'd wanted all of my life. And that was where I found the joy and the love of being integrated with myself and with my own higher power because I'd never been there before. And as we discover when we heal and thrive the quantum way, it's real love and that's where all other love can rest upon. I'm sharing this with you because I hope it can inspire you. And I know that many of you thrivers are living this life now self-partnered and you've been able to do the alone time or maybe you're still in it and you're still doing it. And many more thrivers will find that path as well. And it's how we're supposed to live from that foundation, from that platform, not forever, but to always have it there is what changes everything in all the other relationships. But I want you to know, no matter what trauma you're still experiencing, this true relationship is waiting for you if you choose to move toward it. So let's explore how we go from loneliness or aloneness to healthy connections. And it's pretty important, healthy connections after abuse, because as most of us know, narcissists can be in any walk of our life. It's certainly not just love relationships where we find them. And maybe you've pulled back from your family to heal. So how do you try to reconnect and get out there safely again? It can seem like a really massive jump. And maybe it doesn't seem possible, but yet I promise you it is. You don't have to stay alone forever. So let me take you through a rundown of what that can look like. It looks like this. Taking your healing, your development and your focus, taking it further so that you're able to be yourself safely no matter what other people are or aren't doing and no matter what other people think of you. To be yourself, to be able to create healthy relationships with people who are a match for you, who can be healthy for you. And that means no longer being needy enough to think that certain people have to be your people, no matter who they are, because they don't. And no longer being needy enough to make excuses for people who don't have the capacity to be healthy for you. Being able to identify unhealthy people, not trying to fix them, instead knowing you are worth more than that, which means that you just don't select them to be in your relationship circle. You just bless and accept they are where they are and you no longer have to roll around with them. And you may say, well, that's all good and well, Mel, but how do I not get tricked into thinking that these people are healthy for me? How do you not get tricked? 
by coming home to yourself, which means knowing how to align with your values, being able to trust your intuition, being able to show up truthfully without fear, being able to know how to ascertain people over time instead of rushing in, knowing how to lay great boundaries that are very clear and easy and simple. Ones where narcissists cannot fake their way past. And I promise you they can't. And they actually don't even bother because they're opportunistic. They target completely different people who don't have good boundary function. And it also means developing yourself to a level where you can easily make choices that are a yes to your chosen life and ones that are a no to people who aren't and knowing the difference. And you may say, well, Melanie, that just sounds all too simple. Life's more complicated than that. It's funny, but that's actually not the case. It's really crazy how we haven't been taught the simple things. We have not been taught this interpersonal stuff at all. And because we didn't know it, our children don't know it, just like our parents didn't know it, and so and on and on it goes. And one thing is for certain, if we don't know how to be set up and do healthy relationships, then we don't receive them. We don't have them. Whatever we accept is actually what we get. And people like you and I, especially what we've been through, we don't just fall into great relationships like other people do. That's more their karma or their dharma, if you like. It's just been easier. That hasn't been our journey. So for us, you know, those healthy, wonderful relationships, they don't just drop in our lap. And most of us, from our backgrounds, we didn't even know what that looked like, even if it did drop in our lap. And we would have probably, if we're honest with ourselves, we wouldn't have trusted it and we would have sabotaged it anyway. It wasn't our programming. So developing ourselves into that program quantum, quantumly, which means for real from the inside out, like deep in our cellular being, which ironically is a lot quicker and easier than trying to logically think and learn ourselves there. It's so much faster. If we do it quantumly in ways that create healthy relationships, it means that after narcissistic abuse, we don't have to settle for being lonely and stuck in the pain and we don't have to be stuck in the pain taking the risk of future abuse because we're so confused and we're still very traumatized. Learning and applying this stuff quantumly changed my life beyond description. I went from feeling terrorized and traumatized like most of us, understandably, to be able to be solid and clear inside myself and able to ascertain people on all levels of my life with just simple rules and processes. And this took every part of my interpersonal relationships away from bad people to good people, including my wonderful love partner who I share my life with now. None of this was luck. It's because I'd changed and I knew how to do it. So in conclusion, I really want to give you hope that you don't have to stay indefinitely in that trauma of being alone or being scared to get yourself back out into relationships. And quantum healing and alignment works. But what's really great about it, it's really different to the old way we tried to heal, which is regurgitating it's lengthy, it's arduous, we have to keep unpacking it all and throw it around and put it back in and try to get better and realise that we're probably, you know, it's not doing much. Whereas this way, it's actually wonderful, it's exciting, it's expansive 
And it's downright fascinating. Rather than all that self-blame and shame and victimization, it's like epiphany after epiphany. It's like, oh my God, it's no wonder this has been going on in my life. So it's really liberating. And you start seeing results very quickly. And what that does, it's like if you got into a gym program and you were getting results pretty fast, you and it was sustainable, it would bring you a lot of joy and confidence. And that's what this does. But this is your soul. This is your whole life. And what I love about it, it gives you so much more trust and a greater love for yourself, which is really important. So if you recognize yourself in this and you want help with this, because this is what I do and it's my greatest joy and passion to help people get out of the stuckness and the pain into a higher, better way of living as quickly and directly and as inspirationally as possible. And as such, I've got coming up a quantum dating boot camp. Now I'm going to explain it because don't let the name put you off. Okay. You might think, oh, dating, no way. I don't want to do that. I'm going to explain what it's about because it's definitely not just about dating. And in fact, a lot of people do it who aren't even ready for dating. Okay. And the reason why is, well, first of all, it's a live training group. We get together twice a week for six weeks where we do powerful inner shifts and heaps of training about the stuff I've talked about and even more. So this six-week course, it's about mating your own soul, right, as your platform. So this is about training after abuse to help you in a stand. In a stand is so much more pow powerful than understand. In a stand is your inner identity. So it teaches you how to in a stand know and stand in your values and your truths so that you can, from that place, know how to positively identify somebody's character. Doesn't matter whether they're a narcissist and they're duplicious, you will still be able to know. And there's certain ways to know. And also too, how to categorize your relationships. Some people in your life will be a C or a D grade or an E grade relationship. They don't have capacity to be anymore. So you no longer have that frustration and those wasted years trying to get somebody to step up to be an A grade relationship when they have neither the desire or the capacity to do it. So you stop wasting your time in life with people who are not going to meet you at certain levels. And what that does is it clears the space for, well, the universe gets very clear about who you're being and what you really want, what you are and aren't accepting. And with heart open and powerful manifestation, it starts bringing much higher level vibrational people into your life at every area of your life. And I also teach you how to explore relationships and try them on time appropriately with great boundaries so that you never have to risk being unsafe again. You're not going to put your heart, your soul, your body, your finances, your home on the line ever again. You don't have to, to connect healthily. And you're also going to learn how if something shows up that's not a match for your values, you can easily say no, you can easily push it out, up leveling what's going to come in at an even higher level. And you can do it without despair and loss and regret and without fear. So these skills, which are quantum skills and they're life skills, are going to help you connect to yourself, your life, and other humans at all levels whether it be friendship, whether it be uh, work associates, getting a team for your business. And, of course, a love partner, if that's what you want to manifest. 
So we can do that quantum, the quantum way in confident, gracious. I love gracious because it's powerful, but it's gracious because it's spiritually intelligent and that's the way that we can do it. And if you are ready for your intimate other or you've really got that calling, it's going to help you develop to be ready for that. And during this six-week journey, I can help set you up for high-level soulmate dating. So that's knowing how to call in that unique, special someone and you only need one. That's the beautiful part. Who is the unique lid for you as the unique pot? Because at soul, true self level, that person is seeking you as much as you were seeking them. You just have to know how to unlock it, align with it, and walk it in really empowered, safe, conscious ways. Okay? And that's what this six weeks is about. But you certainly don't have to date or be ready for love. This is the biggest love is made in your own soul and everything else get added on top of that like a beautiful cake. So whichever way this uh, this uh, dating boot camp, what I've discovered with the courses and things I do, so many people in the community have said, you know, Mel, that's the best one we've ever done. I actually love it. I love this topic. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of laughs and it's really powerful. The stuff that you'll learn, it's life-changing. So, you know, my intention with it is that your healing in regard to interpersonal relationships is going to skyrocket because this is all about how do you get back into life and with people into togetherness and we can create so much more together with our tribe on all levels of our life. You know, and that's something that I discovered so much at the tribe I have here at Cape Trib, the tribe I have in my beautiful, um, in my beautiful, you know, MTE family with, with my work colleagues who are just incredible it's it's just incredible, you know. Tribe is we all need to connect. We all need each other. In but it's got to be healthy. So this is going to help you do this in safe, healthy, fulfilling ways. It's part of being human. It's what we all love to do as humans. And also too with uh, dating boot camp participants, I'm doing a really powerful soulmate activation ceremony, which works deeply in your DNA with quarter freedom healing, unlocking you to be a match vibrationally for higher level fifth density relationship. So I'm really looking forward to that event. These events are always really powerful and it's an early bird bonus free special for getting into quantum uh, dating bootcamp. You'll get an invite to that event. So it's all really exciting and I can't wait because it's coming up that stuff early next month. So I hope today has granted you hope that somewhere deep inside you can feel, well, maybe I don't have to just be alone and have this battle of feeling this way in life. That's not what we're meant to do. And I don't have to be so scared of getting back out there. Who's a narcissist? How do I need to protect myself? How do I need to shut down? Because that's not living either. And I hope that you can feel deep in your soul that you do somewhere inside have the capacity to call in beautiful people, not perfect, none of us are perfect, but beautiful people that you can share this crazy, amazing journey of life with. And from my heart to yours, I assure you, this is true for you, just like it has been for me. So Check out the link with this video, explains everything about the boot camp. And until next time, keep smiling, keep healing and keep thriving because what on earth else is there to do if we want a great life? All right. I love you a lot and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.